Howdy YouTube. Today we're taking a look at the Radioddy GA510 dual band handheld radio. This is a 10 watt handheld and Radioddy was nice enough to send it out to us to take a look at and tell you what we think. So let's dig in on K5ATA ham radio. Alright, and here it is. It's the Radioddy. Open this thing up. See what we got. It's the GA510. So you got a manual, programming table, battery, obligatory belt clip, those little earpiece things. Charger. This is a little different. It doesn't have a front on it. I like that. Well, I say I like that. We'll see how it stays in there. Charger. Wall wart. And the antenna. So let's get this thing plugged in and charged up so we can see what we've got. Taking the radio out of there. There's a second battery in here too. So it came with two batteries. So that's a good thing. Go ahead and attach the belt clip real quick. It's another one of these little spring loaded jobs. Um, you'll need to take these two screws out and then just slide it in there. And go ahead and I use one of these dudes instead of having the <clears throat> individual little screwdrivers and stuff. It comes with a little set of different bits. Each one's dual dual ended. So I've got a decent assortment of small torques and Phillips and slotted on there so get this thing off of here all right and like i said before the best way to get these belt clips on is go ahead and slide it down on there and keep pressure on the clip and then drop in your screw otherwise you'll be fighting this thing forever to fight that spring and this thing's got long screws going down into it so and that's that so let's get this thing on the charging um, one thing to note the charging base um but that that's kind of bright don't don't put this by your bed if you want to sleep with it near you kind of thing because I mean I guess if you like the disco ball effect hey go for it but that would be a little too bright for me my my shack is not connected to my bedroom so I'm... okay click right click start and here it goes you see it says program It's rebooting and it's there. It's programmed. So let's test this out and see if it works. Okay, so the programming software. It's just like your typical programming software. It's very chirpish feeling. Um, easy to use. It's obviously much easier to program than a DMR radio would be because it's not a DMR radio. So you plug it in. It you know read the the radio info. Start plugging in your repeaters. You can set up so it's got the man automatic split and stuff like that in there. But it took no time at all to get this thing up and on the air. It was two minutes, three minutes maybe, putting this thing on the air and then, you know, keying up to see if I could hit the repeater 18, 19 miles away. So programming this piece of cake. You can program it from the keypad also. You know, you can get into the menus and you know squelch and reset language by the way it does give you the option to change language to English um, you can set your transmit tone you can you can do a lot of the programming right here on the radio so you don't have to have a computer and a programming cable to do it that's the nice thing about some of these simple VHF UHF handheld radios you can still program them from the keypad, like back in the day. Okay, so I am about, I think it's something like 18 miles or something to the repeater. 
Um, I did just try to key it up with the stock antenna. I'll try it one more time. W5WRP K5ATA. And I didn't even hear the squelch trail, so that's okay. I have the Nagoya. So trying that again with the Nagoya 771. W5WRP K5ATA. Not thinking I'm even triggering the repeater. Let me turn on this mobile radio. W5WRP K5ATA. Okay, so I was able to trigger it, but it wasn't intelligible. But I am sitting in the house under a metal roof, so I'm gonna sit. Hey Curtis, I'm just out here testing this new uh, radio I'm testing out for the review. How's it coming through? Is it making it all the way to the repeater? Sounds pretty solid from here. Uh, might be a little scratchy, but uh, sounds good. Okay, can you hang tight? Okay, so now we're out here. This is the stock rubber duck antenna that came with it. W5WRP K5ATA. How's this one coming through? Okay, I'm going to try that middle Nagoya, the 701, and see how it does with that. But that's impressive. This is the rubber ducky antenna from my front porch to the repeater, but it's a 10 watt handheld, so it's not bad. All right, so now I have the Nagoya the 701. All right, and this is that Nagoya 701, the one that's like eight inches long. How does it sound? Did you copy that, Curtis? I'm trying the Nagoya 701 antenna. How does it come, sound? Oh, that's interesting. Let me change my position slightly here. All right, how about now? I'm turned a little bit differently there. Yeah, it's definitely still very readable. Um, possibly uh, uh, a little better than the rubber duck, but not a whole lot. Okay, well, that's pretty impressive. I'm probably 19 miles or something like that from the repeater site, so... Well, maybe not as the bird flies. I need to draw it out on that Google map and see. But all right, man, I appreciate it. I'm going to finish setting this thing up. K5 ATA, I'll be clear on your final. Much clear on that last transmission. WF5, WRP clear. Okay, so they say it's a 10 watt radio. And just to be honest with you, I, I can hit the repeater with 5 watts from my front porch, but I don't hit it well. Um, nope, that light timed out there. It's 10 seconds. So not very heavy. Um, honestly, decent little radio so far. I'm going to wear it around for a couple days and see All what right. I think. So I took this thing off the charger yesterday afternoon at about, I'd say about four o'clock. It is now eight o'clock the next morning. So it's been 14 hours. I'm kind of testing to see this battery gives me as much time as it says. It says 96 hours, so I don't intend to put it on the charger for 96 hours. And the battery still shows full, so we're going to use this radio today, give it some regular talking time, and see and what happens. it. I guess it's about 38 hours now. Battery's at half. I guess it's about half. So far, so good. It's been on non-stop. Like I said, it's had conversations on it. It's been receiving. So... So far, okay, so it's been 53, 54 hours now. 
the battery is just about the flat line on me. I've been talking on it the last couple of minutes. Uh, look down and notice that the battery is just about flat. So not bad though. Fifty three hours or so on. See, it's flashing on. Huh? It just went up a bar. I'm gonna leave it on and see how many hours it actually gets. Then, like I said, it ships with two batteries. So when one goes out, you just throw the other one on. The other one fits in the charger without having to have the radio on it. So easily with the two batteries they ship, you get 96 hours. More like probably 110 or something like that. I mean, it's been a bunch. See, the uh, extra battery fits in that charger without it, like I said. So we are about to swap these batteries out. Mostly because, well, this thing's spouting off low voltage on me constantly. And low voltage. There you go. And it's definitely not going to let you forget that you need to swap your batteries. So let me swap those out real quick. All right. So having looked at this thing for several days, I got to say I'm impressed. Okay. 10 watts on a handheld. I wasn't sure that that extra five watts was really going to make that much of a difference. But I can tell you in use, it really did. I was able to hit the repeater from a lot more places than I normally was with a handheld. Um, I was a lot more solid from places that I was marginal before. Um, everything seemed to hold up great. I mean, I wore it as my EDC radio for three days or so. I was able to get 54 hours off of one battery. Now, they do advertise 96 hours on the battery or on of life, but they ship it with two batteries. So I, I have a feeling that's what they mean is you're going to get 96 hours with the two batteries they ship it with. Um, like I said, the battery doesn't have to be on the radio for it to be charging. So you can charge the radio, then throw the extra battery pack on there. Um, the battery packs themselves are small. They're lightweight. The radio is small and lightweight. Um, it's smaller than the Anytones and stuff like that, but it is significantly lighter, probably half. The uh, it's stock antenna that comes with it really does a pretty good job. I mean, I was able to hit the repeater better with this than I was with the Nagoya 701 from some places. Now, you know how that, that goes and what that's worth, but it's not trash. Um, and a lot of times that stock antenna isn't really worth a whole lot. This one seems to be. Overall, like I said, I like this radio. I think it goes for something like 65 bucks or something like that on the Radio Oddity website. And I'll post that link down below. But 65 bucks got me a programming cable, two batteries, the radio itself, the bell clip, obviously. And, well, I'm going to hang on to this. This is one that, you know, it's going to be my EDC radio whenever I want something lightweight on the belt. I would definitely recommend the Radio Oddity GA510. I mean, it's a solid radio. So that's it. Um, any questions or comments or anything, comment below. Hit like, hit subscribe. We do appreciate it. Y'all take care and we'll see you on the air.